MuseScore is one of my favorite tools I use for guitar projects. And as much as I love this program, it's not always the most intuitive piece of software to use. I found that there are specific actions commonly needed for guitar writing that are not always so easy to find. And that's okay because it's free and we can still do what we need to do with it. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to add palm muting, bends, and slides, all of which you'll likely need at some point if you're writing music for the guitar. I also wanna make sure I'm giving you something extra practical to take with you before you leave, which is why I put a link for my guitar gains cheat sheet in the description of this video. So just download it and make sure you're not falling victim to one of the biggest mistakes that guitarists make when they want to actually get better at their instrument. Just click that link I put down below or you can go to zacksharguitar.com and download this awesome free resource. Now let's jump in and add some guitar specific tricks to a MuseScore project. So I've got a super quick and dirty Muse score project that I just opened up. It's just for demo purposes. And what you do in your Muse score project, you might not already have this option with you, but you're going to try to go to the palette section over here at the left. And what you might need to do if you already don't have a palette for a guitar is you click add palette and then you just see where that guitar is and then you click the plus sign and boom, there we go. We've got our guitar palette where most of the palette options, most of the little guitar tricks we wanna add are right there for us. So for example, we're gonna start with palm muting. And right now when we look at our project, there is no palm muting. So for that, all you need to do is click on a note and then you go to the palette where you click that PM symbol and boom, that note is now palm muted. But what do you do if you want to add palm muting to several notes at once? So in this case, I'm going to get rid of this real quick. I'm going to select that note that I have palm muted. I'm going to hold my shift key on my keyboard and then I'm going to add this whole group of eighth notes right here, all four of these notes. So all of that is selected. I'm gonna go back to the palette section, click on PM again, and there you go. You have that whole group of eighth notes right there, palm muted. And a little shortcut, once you get more used to this, let's say, you know, this is hiding right here. You click in the search palette and you can just type in palm muting. I just typed in palm and there you go, it just showed up right there. So it's important to note the whole palm muting section is that even though you have it represented here on the tab and you can infer that with the standard notation if you, you know, get hung up on that type of thing. I know we're guitarists, it's not very common for us to even care about that, but you will care if you want to hear the playback on this. So what you're going to do from here is select the corresponding notes on the standard notation staff. Go over to your little palm muting symbol here in the palette. And there you go, it's parallel here with the palm muting. So here's what that sounds like real quick. And there you go, because without that also appearing in the standard notation section, you don't hear the palm muting on the playback. Case in point. Now let's get into adding bends to our project. So what you want to do for that is you go to any note you want. I'm going to click this one right here, for example. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is just go to the search bar here. And since there's different types of bends with this, I'm going to start with vibrato. Now you see when I type that in, it gives you a list of options. But what I'm going to do is go down to the guitar section. And you have different vibrato options. They, it doesn't really matter a whole lot which one you pick. 
but it does specify with the wider one that it is depicting a wider vibrato, like something Zach Wilde usually does. So let's just throw that in for fun. And there you go. It adds the vibrato to the specific note I was targeting. But there's other kinds of bends we can do with this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna click this note. I wanna bend it, but I wanna change this from a half note to a quarter note. And I'm gonna go to my search bar here. I'm gonna type in bend. And I'm gonna go to this standard bend here. And there it is. So what I can do here is adjust the note I want to bend it up to. So as it stands, it is currently a full step bend. But let's say I wanted to do a half step bend. I'm gonna change this note here just for fun. So let me go back here. I'm gonna add my bend, but let's customize it. So what I do for this is I click on the bend line here, this little arrow. And as you can see, this properties section popped up. And what I'm gonna do is go to this little graph here because this indicates that swooping bend of one whole step. But let's drop it down to a half step. And there we go, we were just able to customize our bend by changing it from a whole step bend to a more subtle half step bend. Now let's get rid of some of the stuff we just did and try to focus on some sliding. So I'm gonna delete everything in this measure. Add some notes here. Let's do, um, let's do this one here. I wanna go over to nine let's put that for a beat of three here all right so what i want to do for this is indicate some sort of slide from this note here over to this note right here and to do that, what you can do to start is add another palette. And what you wanna do is add arpeggios and glissandos or glissandos. Tomato, tomato, I'm gonna to call it glissando. So just hit that little plus sign. It is added. So now all you need to do from here is click the note you want to initiate the slide and then go over to your arpeggios and glissandos palette. Then you hit this little icon here that says straight glissando. Boom, there you go. So this is the most visually appealing way to indicate a slide in my opinion, but you can also do something else. And the reason why you might want to select the alternative is if you want to hear what this sounds like in MuseScore upon the playback because it sounds kind of funny in this scenario, and I'll show you what I mean real quick by that. Not a huge deal. This ultimately gets the job done. It's just a little food for thought if you really value the playback experience. But if that's you, you could also do one other little trick here. So I'm just gonna get rid of what I just did here. And I'm gonna go back over to this little palette we were just in, and I'm gonna click my note first, and I want to select this icon, slide out up. It's essentially the same thing, but it just sounds a little slidier in the program. So here's what that sounds like. You can play around with the different slides they have as options for you within the software, but that's pretty much it. Now you can create a guitar project in MuseScore using some of the most common guitar tricks, which are palm muting, bending, and sliding. And once you get past some of the weird and non-intuitive road bumps that come along with this program, 
you get used to it more and more and you end up banging out some projects pretty quickly. Again, make sure you're not neglecting your guitar skills along the way, so don't forget to download my free Guitar Gains Cheat Sheet if you have not done so already. I've linked it below in the description for you, so you can just click it there and download it, or you can go to ZachSharGuitar.com again and grab that for free. I'm Zach with Zach Shar Guitar. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.